Hi, and welcome to Kombucha Chem Academy. If you're new here, my name is John, and I'm a co-founder of Cultured Analysis. And we're a company that focuses on um, research analysis and consultation in the kombucha and brewed beverages industry. The topic for today's um, video is gonna be something of the elephant in the room when it comes to kombucha brewing and consumption. And that's going to be ethyl alcohol or ethanol content in kombucha. So before we get into um, the kombucha specific part of this video, we wanna talk a little bit about the chemistry of ethyl alcohol. Well, first of all, what is it? Well, when we talk about ethyl alcohol, obviously that's the type of alcohol that would be found in kombucha. It's also the type of alcohol that's found in other alcoholic beverages such as beer or wine. Now, getting into the chemistry side of this, what we'd like to look at first is the specific structure, the chemical structure of ethyl alcohol, which I show you here on the board. So what we have is essentially a carbon hydrogen chain, as you see here on the left hand side of the molecule, attached to an oxygen hydrogen group, which is known as the um, alcohol group um, of the molecule. And it's this OH group here that makes this an alcohol. So all alcohols will have that OH group attached to some sort of a carbon hydrogen chain. And it's the variation in the carbon hydrogen chain that makes different alcohols different. So this specific alcohol, we can name either ethyl alcohol, sometimes it's referred to as ethanol, and often we shorthand it as ETOH, with the ET, of course, representing ethyl. Now, next, why do we actually find ethyl alcohol in kombucha? In other words, where does it come from? Why is it in kombucha? Well, we have to go back to the fact that we all know that kombucha is an example of a fermented beverage. And any fermented food or beverage is going to involve fermentation by yeast. And if we take a look at yeast fermentation, what happens in any of these processes is that sugar is taken up by yeast, and then the yeast is going to produce um, carbon dioxide gas and ethyl alcohol. Okay, so that's the process, for example, that happens in beer brewing. Now, when we get to kombucha, of course we know that we also have as part of our SCOBY, um, not only yeast, but also acidic bacteria. And what happens here is that the ethyl alcohol or the ethanol that's produced by the yeast is then consumed as food for the bacteria along with sugar to form the characteristic organic acids, such as acetic acid and gluconic acid that we find in kombucha. And of course, we have a much more comprehensive video um, showing this process, which we will link below. So based on the diagram that I just showed you, um, what we can see is that the um, ethyl alcohol that's produced by the yeast is not 100% consumed by the bacteria. So in our final kombucha product, we're going to end up with a little bit of residual ethyl alcohol left over. So that's why the ethyl alcohol resides in the kombucha. Now, when we get down to characterization here, we have to understand that kombucha can be characterized in two ways based upon its ethyl alcohol concentration. It can be classified either as a non-alcoholic kombucha or as an alcoholic or hard kombucha. And the cutoff, according to the United States Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau, otherwise known as the TTB, is half a percent ABV. All right, so if a kombucha has less than a half a percent um, alcohol by volume, it's classified as a non-alcoholic product. And if the um, ABV is greater than or equal to half a percent, then it has to be classified as an alcoholic or hard kombucha. So, in the end, what does ABV actually represent? What does it mean to us? Well, in chemistry, it's a concentration unit. Okay, so it's a measured concentration unit. And what it is, is our percent ethyl alcohol in our beverage expressed as a volume ratio or percent. So an example of this is if we have a kombucha that's 0.5% ABV, what that really means to us in terms of a measurement is that kombucha sample will contain 0.5 or half a milliliter of pure ethyl alcohol or ethanol 
per every 100 milliliters of the kombucha product. So again, it's a volume to volume um, ratioed concentration. So let's next talk a little bit about what factors determine ABV values in kombucha. In other words, why in one situation might an ABV equal 2.3%, but yet in another type of kombucha, it might be 1.5%. Well, it turns out there are a number of different things that matter here, and I've listed a few. The first is the initial recipe that the brewer chooses to use um, to prepare the kombucha. The second item would be the fermentation technique or conditions of fermentation. That also can affect the ABV um, in kombucha. And then finally, and this is a big one, the composition or balance of the SCOBY. So based upon the um, diagram that you saw before that shows how the ethanol is made and consumed, it should make sense to us that a well-balanced SCOBY should be able to help us to regulate um, ABV in kombucha. And then finally, if you come to the lab, how do we measure alcohol by volume? And here at Cultured Analysis, we use the gold standard technique for doing this, and that's headspace gas chromatography utilizing flame ionization detection. Um, that's the gold standard used in the food and beverage industry as well as in the forensic science industry. So it's gonna give the best possible value, the most accurate value that you can get. And that I think will be the topic for another video where we can bring you into the lab and explain a little bit more about how that technique works. So hopefully the take home from this video, if you're a kombucha brewer or even a consumer here, is that careful alcohol testing is imperative for the production of kombucha. So to remain within the guidelines of the Tax and Trade Bureau, keeping that ABV below 0.5% if you're trying to prepare or consume a non-alcoholic kombucha. Regular and careful testing is imperative, and that's exactly what we provide here at Cultured Analysis. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.